going on everybody c4 here welcome back to the channel today we're continuing with our 32 team seven round mock draft series and before we get into the mock drafts we've been stopping here in madden 20 looking at every single team and seeing what moves they've made in free agency they kind of set the framework of how we're going to go after and attack their mock draft and today the chicago bears are up on the clock and with no first round pick they have to wait all the way to the second round to try to make the most of it as they were one of the underperformers last year but they maybe made a move at quarterback that could help get them with their hop. Nick Foles trading for him. I assume he's going to be their starter. It's probably going to be a competition. But uh, if I had to say what quarterback has that lead track to getting the starting gig, it's probably going to be Nick Foles. And I think Nick Foles worked with Matt Nagy. They worked together with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the running back, you got Montgomery and Cohen. You know, they didn't get you know great production out of the running backs last season. I think that might have been more so game plan than it is talent. But... They could look at a running back. A wide receiver, Allen Robinson's really good. Miller's pretty damn good. Probably need a third wide receiver, Raleigh Ridley. Wims. You got Cordero Patterson. Yeah, I would suggest probably bring in an A wide receiver in the draft. Tight end. Um, you know, again, not a lot of stability there. Seen by the just, they kind of overpaid for Jimmy Graham. They got Trey Burton. They're not happy. They have like 40 tight ends on their roster right now, but they're probably not going to draft one there. On the offensive line, you're good at left tackle, you're good at left guard, you're good at center. Right guard, big hole to fill with Kyle Long retiring. They got a Fetty coming over from the Seattle Seahawks. They might push him inside to guard, but I think I think that right-hand side of the offensive line, you could also look at improving that during the draft. And that's if I'm looking at the offense, um, I would say a wide receiver, right-hand side of the O-line, and then just, you know, if, if a quarterback or a running back slips that you really like, maybe dip your toe in there. Flipping to the defense, front three, really solid. Bilal Nichols, upside. You got Eddie Goldman and Hicks, more so proven commodities. Roy Roberts and Harris is giving you guys some pretty good, pretty good reps, I would say. So your front three is solid. Um, your, your linebacking core here, you got Roquan Smith, Danny Trevathan as the inside linebackers. Maybe you could draft another young guy there because Trevathan's not spring chicken. He's, what, 30? So you can look at that. Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn on the outside. You know, there's no more Leonard Floyd. You got one with some veterans here. I think maybe getting a younger edge rusher wouldn't be the worst thing you could do. Uh, flip it to the defensive backs. Eddie Jackson's really damn good. Strong safety. Probably could use a guy. They got Jordan Lucas. I think he's coming from the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs. Chiefs or Browns or something like that. But either way, I, I think a strong another safety would be a valuable pickup here for the the. The Bears, and I'm looking at the defense so far, I would say safety would be the biggest need, as well as corner. You have Kyle Fuller, but who the hell is going to play next to him? Skrine's a, a slot guy. Artie Burns has been inconsistent at best. Had an okay to good rookie season with the Steelers, but fell off since then. Maybe a change of scenery helps him out, but I think corner and safety would be the two big needs for me when I'm looking at this Chicago Bear defense, and I definitely want to try to grab one of those guys earlier than later when we get into the draft. But now it is that time. To hop into the seven round mock draft for the Chicago Bears. Let's get it. So we're here now on the clock at pick 43 with the Chicago Bears. Why the sudden Noah Igbongnagahi? Corner from Auburn. Sure. We'll go with that's how you pronounce it. Hey. Why can't you be Noah Thomas? You know? Oh well, keep make be unique. You know, it's 2020. 5 10, 200 pounds corner out of Auburn. He's the project corner who scouts Rainbow at his high ceiling, brings good speed, 447. A good athletic burst, 37-inch vertical. It can develop into a starting outside corner. He has great footwork. And more than likely, you're looking at all the corners right now on the Chicago Bears roster. If they bring him in, if I'm looking at everyone else, I think he's going to be the most likely to end up the longtime partner for forever long to keep him on for Kyle Fuller. I mean, you got Artie Burns kind of fizzled out there with the Steelers. Kevin Tolliver, thought it was a nice value. It wasn't a UDFA out of LSU. I thought he would have got drafted last year. Buster Scrine in the slot. Stefan Denmark. Uh, the seven-round pick, Valdosa State, put up a crazy pro day, but he's much more of an athlete than he is an actual corner. You know, again, you go secondary here, I think, has to be the pick. The Bears secondary needs to get retooled. I think getting a developmental guy. Let's try it again. Igbog Nagahi. Yeah, that sounds almost all right. I, I just think bringing in a guy like that, that a lot of scouts rave on. Personally, I think I'm not on high him as, as many people. The two, three times I actually watched Al uh, Auburn play, he was the guy that was getting picked on. But this is much more of a, a scouts um, trusting the people who actually get paid for this and not just an idiot on the internet. Going to the second uh, second round pick at pick 50, Island Sunday Antoine Winfield Jr., safety from Minnesota. And I should really say not safety. He's a defensive back, 5'9", 205, a complete DB. You can play free safety, strong safety, nickel corner, great athlete, 4'4", 5", had a breakout 2019 where he had 88 tackles, 3.5 TFLs, 3 sacks, 
Two forced fumbles, eight pass breakups, seven interceptions. And for the Chicago Bears, you're going to be getting an Adrian Amos-style safety if you put him there with, I think, a better football IQ. Amos was much more of an athlete than he was a technical football player. I remember Amos shot up draft boards because he had a killer uh, pro day at Penn State. And I think you're going to get a great athlete. Winfield. Not the longest athlete, not the biggest athlete, but such a smart player, such an instinctful player, a great athlete, versatility. I think he's a day one starter, and I think he could be the long-term partner. Again, we're, we're pairing people here. We're, we're a matchmaker right now for this mock draft for the Bears. But I think you pair him with Eddie Jackson, and you're going to have really, really good, good safety play. And you can kind of view Winfield like the, how they use Honey Badger in Kansas City. He can play safety. Also, you can move him in and play nickel corner. Now, they don't have a pick for a little bit. Now, we're going to wait to the fifth round at 163, where that's letting Ben Barch tackle from St. John's. 6 5 3 10, small school standout from the Senior Bowl. Ben Barch is a technically sound tackle with good athletic ability, as he is a converted tight end. Uh, and a little bit of a mean streak. I mean, he didn't get to play in the Senior Bowl, but during the, the reps and all the reps of the Senior Bowls, people that were there just kept tweeting, Who's this Barch guy? He, he came in bad intentions. Going up against bigger school players, he was bullying them. I think he has right tackle upside, but can contribute sooner than later on this Chicago Bears offensive line as a swing tackle. But more so, I'm looking at that right tackle spot. Bobby Massey, can you do better? He's not on a, a great contract. I think they can, and Ben Barts could be the future on that right-hand side. Now in the sixth round, they have two sixth-round picks. First up at 196, I was letting Tyree Cleveland, wide receiver from Florida, 6 2 2 10, a speed receiver who just kind of stretched the surface at Florida. As a Gator fan, I'll never forget his Hail Mary catch against um, Tennessee. He also kind of had some off-the-field issue one year, but I, I don't think it's really that much of a red flag. He kind of got on the straight and narrow to finish out his career at Florida. I think I do think, obviously, 4'4", 6", 39.5-inch vert. He's much more athlete than he is refined receiver, but he's going to be able to come in and stretch this field and, and replace this speed they have in Taylor Gabriel. And I think long-term, is going to be kind of a core Daryl Patterson-type weapon that they can utilize on this Bears offense. You know, put him in between Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller long-term. I think uh, the speed, without a shadow of a doubt, though, is something that Nagy and Bill Azor will be able to utilize. Going to the second six-round pick at 200, I was letting Tyree Phillips, lineman from Mississippi State, 6'5", 330 pounds, power blocker, who could project either an offensive tackle because of his length or slide into guard because he's, you know, he's, he's not the greatest athlete and you kind of want your better athletes to have a good, great first step on the outside. So he might project more so into guard, which is where I kind of have him. He's a last-chance U-era player. Uh, East Mississippi Community College. He's a solid. I don't think he was actually on the show. I can't recall. Uh, but he's a solid depth piece for this Bears offensive line. I think interiorly, interiorly, is that a word? We're gonna make it a word. Uh, at guard and really at center, there's not a lot of depth there, and especially that right guard spot. Trying to figure out who's gonna be the successor to Kyle Long. They don't have that man on the roster. I think Phillips could bring some nice power. Even though he's a little bit one dimensional, make things interesting uh, for that spot. Seventh round, two seventh round picks here for the Chicago Bears. First up at two twenty six. I was letting Clay Johnson, linebacker from Baylor, 6'1", 230. I think he's going to be like a Nick Kwiatkowski replacement. He's more of a modern-day linebacker, a little bit undersized, but uh, looked really good for half the season he played for Baylor before he got hurt. I watched way too many Baylor games for not really being a Baylor fan, even though I guess if I had to pick a team in the Big 12, I would pick Baylor. Uh, but in six games there uh, this season, 58 tackles, 8 TFLs, 2 sacks, 6 pass breakups, and a pick. Should lock down that inside linebacker four spot on the Bears roster. And he's going to be able to bring juice to the special teams early on. Big hitter. Him and Bernard, I believe, is the other linebacker. The other at Baylor. He's going to be one to watch next year. Uh, they were really fun when they're both playing together. Big time hitters, even though they're not really, you know, your traditional 240, 245 type linebacker. And then finishing up in this episode at 233, I was letting Kendall Coleman, defensive end from Syracuse, 6'2", 260 pounds. Competitive edge rusher with a solid two years of production. 80 tackles, 22 and a half TFLs, 14 sacks. I think he's going to add some depth behind either Khalil Mack or Robert Quinn. Uh, when you really look at what's beyond that, not much. You got Barkevius Mingo. I mean, that guy there has just been bouncing around team to teams. Never really lived up to his high billing. Was he a first round pick for the Browns? First or second round pick, I feel like. Uh, I can't remember. It's been a long time. Been a long time, but he's been bouncing around. There's just not a lot of depth. If, by heaven's sake, Mac or Robert Quinn go down, there's not a lot of depth. And I'm not going to say you're going to get a guy in the seventh round that should make you feel comfortable about your lack of edge rush depth. But I do think if, you know he's a solid player, and I think could project better as a 3-4 outside linebacker than a 4-3 end. 
Uh, so more so just kind of going best player available here in the seventh round, trying to find an edge rusher that could add and improve that Bears edge depth. So there you go. That is going to do it up here for that seven round Chicago Bears mock draft. So as always, if you agree or disagree with any of the picks you saw today, let me know in the comment section below. If it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace.